in this last video of the course, I will make a few general observations about the state of Hindustani music today and the challenges that it faces. Hindustani music is practiced and patronized by a small clutch of people. In sheer numbers, it is not of great significance when compared to popular music of all kinds. And this has always been the case. By definition, art music is not popular music. But because of its undeniable heritage value and its prestige among musical traditions in India, it thrives at a certain level. And uh, the community of Hindustani music, both practitioners and listeners, make up in its passion. The community makes up in its passion what it does not have in its numbers. Patronage for this music that moved from royal and feudal centers to the public now involves corporate sponsorship in a significant way with its own dynamics. Sabhas, music festivals, private contributors, private soirees, organizers among non-resident Indian communities in countries all over the globe. All these players continue to sustain this music. Music teaching continues to be oral, oral through the Guru-Shishya relationship. Even though the Guru Kulavasa or living in your Guru's household as a member of his family while learning the many aspects of this art, that is more or less obsolete today. There is no doubt that it is a subtle art requiring many years of practice, intense practice. Practice or riyaz or sadhana is very much seen as imperative to a musician's making and growth. Riyaz is an Urdu word and sadhana is a Sanskrit word and both are used to refer to the hours that the musician puts in by herself to master various aspects of this music. Perhaps with an added connotation of uh, spiritual intensity. We have stories of masters and their uh, insane riyas uh, routines. Ustad Allah Rakha, Tabla Master, for instance, um, he said to have practiced only one stroke of the Tabla, the Na, for hours in the winter cold of the north until his fingers started bleeding. Um, in an interview with Dr. Ashok Ranade, Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi casually mentions a period when he would do riyas for 20 to 22 hours in a day. Is this even humanly possible? When did he eat? When did he sleep? But that is the kind of commitment that this art has elicited from its practitioners. Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi talks of Swara Siddhi. Siddhi is achievement or attainment, but with yogic connotations, and spiritual connotations. Musicians of many hues have spoken of this dimension in the music in one way or the other, explicitly or implicitly. Malik Arjun Mansur, a musician who lived and breathed music and one of the greatest of all time, said of his guru, he says this, when I heard Banji Khan, that is his guru, my life completely changed. I was wonderstruck by his imagination. He uses the expression Kalpana Vilas and also his Swara Siddhi. And I realized that music is a Daivi Shakti, it is a divine power. And this power envelops you and surges through you, like when a serpent bites you and its poison spreads all over and possesses you. Now, this is a very striking analogy to use, but this is the kind of uh, frenzy with which musicians 
uh, yearn for this music and have practiced to attain a level of mastery over it. One of the fundamental values of Hindustani music lies in the domain of what is called Sur. Sur Lagana, that is finding the Sur and rendering it. It is a fundamental challenge in performance. Masters have striven for hundreds of hours to achieve Sur Siddhi or mastery over Sur. Now what is Sur? Simply it can be translated as tunefulness and it is indeed that. But in Hindustani music, being tuneful is a matter of searching for the perfect sur, the pitch, a search that is as much a matter for the spirit as it is for the body because the pitch, the swara, the sur is not an objective frequency whose correctness or otherwise is a matter of measurement. The purity of sur is a little more intangible. And this Ustad Badegula Malikha has said very beautifully in response to a question about Sur. He quotes uh, an Urdu share or couplet about Mohabbat or love. And the uh, couplet is like this Mohabbat hai wo nazuk si hakikat, mehsus jise karte hai, samjha nahi sakte. Sache sur ki hakikat mehsus ki jati hai. Gana jadu hi hai. This is what he says. That is, mohabbat or love. That is the original verse. And in the verse it says that mohabbat or love is that delicate thing that cannot be described, but it must be felt. And he says, this is equally true of sacha sur, the true sur. What is sur? You know it when you hear it. Mehsus ki, ki jati hai. And he says, Sangeet, gana jadu hai. Music is magic. Srimati Kishori Amunkar too has spoken of her quest for sur, saying that she seeks the darshan of sur. Darshan is a sacred thing, you know. It is a glimpse of the deity in a temple, for instance. And for her, Sur was a divine thing that might reveal itself in an act of grace. In any other uh, culture, maybe, all this probably will not make sense. And quite likely, it will cease to make sense anywhere in the world, given that this is a world of auto-tune and dozens of other technological tune tools. And it is a world that does not have the patience to listen, but scopes out one music video before rushing on to the next. So in today's world of clickbaits and viral videos that garner millions of views for sometimes astonishingly thin content, what is the value of the Satchasur that Khan Sahib talks about? Like many other aspects of an earlier way of life, this music too faces challenges, the unique challenges of the 21st century. But optimism about its future seems justified given the passion and intelligence of its practitioners and listeners. We all know what is at stake. And uh, one believes that it will survive and thrive even if not in the way it was practiced a generation ago. That is in any case a given that music, any living tradition is going to keep changing, going to keep evolving in one direction or another. Courses such as this might give an idea about the subtlety of this music and go some distance towards strengthening its ecosystem. It is time then to sign off. I want to thank the coordinators of NPTEL, Professor Andrew Tangaraj and Ms. Bharati Bailaji, who have been immensely supportive. I want to acknowledge the technical crew, uh, Mr. Kandan Krishnamurti and 
Karthik Bhupati, who have been involved in recording these sessions and editing them. I want to thank all the guest contributors. My deep gratitude towards them. Pandit Satyashil Deshpande, Pandit Ritvik Sanyal, Dr. Anish Pradhan, Pandit Suresh Vyas, Dr. Supriya Shah, Pandit Vyas Murthy Kati, and our performers, uh, Bhuvanesh Komkali and his team, Nirbhai Saxena and his team. My thanks to all of them. I also want to thank Sujin Deshpande for handling the segment on Gharana and for his other inputs. Finally, thank you all for joining me in this course and keep listening to Hindustani music. <laughs>